I'm Logan Crawford, and right now on Spotlight, I'm delighted to introduce you to a wonderfully talented author. His name is Donald Gray Schwartz, and he has written a book called Deep Tie, Vents of Fire. It is a gripping tale of mystery, intrigue, and adventure set in the unexplored depths of the ocean. Right now, we will explore this near-future scenario where two female scientists embark on a daring mission to uncover remarkable life forms in deep sea vents. We're delighted to have this very talented author join us here today on Spotlight. We thank our team at Atticus Publishing for helping us put him in the spotlight today. And we ask viewers like you to support writers like him by subscribing to our channel and by purchasing his wonderful book. The links are below this interview. Donald, great to see you here today on Spotlight. My pleasure, Logan. Thank you. This is quite an imaginative world, yet believable world you've come up with within the pages of Deep Tide. Tell us a little bit about your inspiration. Yes. Um, actually, audacious, I think, is a good uh, description. Um, one of the things I wanted to do was promote women scientists. Mm -hmm. And as you already mentioned, it's a double protagonist uh, adventure with who was a professor who was the instructor of the other, but came to depend on her very much. And I came across articles some years ago about the smoke vents deep in the ocean. And with those articles were commentaries that we know more now about the geography of Mars than we do about our own ocean depths. So I thought, well, with my vivid imagination, which never goes away. You know? yeah. um, as a matter of fact, we should, if it's okay with you, can I mention, may I mention my website? Sure, absolutely. Tell which us. Which has my other books on there as well. Great. And author for, F O R, all seasons, seasons is plural, dot com. Okay. So great. I thought, well, I'll write this fictional piece because who would ever do this actual thing? Although, since I wrote it and asked my collaborator, Stephen Evans, and I want to mention him for sure, because mm -hmm. he's the scientist, uh, genetic scientist, and a rock, literally a rocket scientist, mm -hmm. that I asked to check the science. Because even though it's science fiction, mm -hmm. we want it, the science to be as correct as possible. Absolutely. Even though we're predicting certain things. And some of the things we predicted are starting to be found now by actual marine biologists. Uh, these weird life forms that are not anaerobic. They don't take in oxygen or give off carbon, carbon dioxide. And one of the theories I read was that these may have been the primordial life forms that somewhere as they came to the surface, transformed into the DNA mm -hmm. that began our evolution, uh, evolutionary process. Mm -hmm. So I started putting all those things down and I have found, um, as I think most authors will agree with this, you need, it doesn't matter whether you write two pages a day or 12 pages a day, you just need to select that time sit down, make the first stroke, and before you know it, you have three, four, seven pages. Yeah. Which is what I did. Wonderful. Yep. And the journey of a thousand miles begins with one footstep. Exactly. Write one or two sentences. The next thing you know, you got a page. Next thing you know, you got a chapter. Next thing you know, you've got a book and quite a book you've written here. Tell us what are these deep sea vents anyway? Well, they actually exist. Uh, you know, any science fiction, you, you know, the, the trip to Mars or, or beyond, there's truth to that. Uh, and we may be going to Mars uh, sometime or the moon. But of course, the moon first. Um, they actually do exist and they haven't been very much explored until very recently. And they do throw out smoke and fire and volcanic eruptions and curious, wormy-like beings, creatures, how can they live in this fire and smoke 
and they've adapted to this environment or came from this environment. And it is compelling scientists, um, rocket science, space scientists now to wonder, well, maybe under the, the uh, uh, moons of e moon of EO, there may be these life forms or even on Mars who survive in these harsh environments. And so I did a projection of that. And um, once audaciously, if you can actually get a craft that would survive going into the vent large enough, and that's why I call it audacious. Uh, in reality, I don't think, I think they would actually send a robot in. Yeah. But these two women are intense and they want to get in. And that's what they discover are these strange beings with, uh, are these the creatures that began life on our planet? Amazing, amazing. The answers yeah. could be down there awaiting us. And like you said, for some reason, we know more about outer space and the depths of the seas and getting there is a problem. Obviously, last year we had that issue where the probe going down into the oh. water, you know, uh, yeah. catastrophically exploded. And it kind of reminded me of that when I read your book uh, as well. Tell me, uh, let's give the folks at home an overview. Let's tell them what the story is basically about. Yeah. Uh, to summarize, it's very complex, but mm -hmm. to, I'll use my, and I'm an old academic, so I try to reduce the complex to the simple, as you have just requested. Sure. Uh, two marine biologists, two female marine biologists, one happened to have been the professor, one happened to have been the student, but the student was so brilliant, she became a team member, a two-person team member. They have determined, they have sent down robotic um, uh, capsules to capture images of these vents, and they found one that opens periodically huge enough to allow a real ship to go through. And they realize if they're going to do something so audacious, they have to get a billionaire mm -hmm. interested. And they do make an appointment. Uh, it, the book opens, uh, I can even read the opening a little bit, uh, in, in the Gulf Coast, where the billionaire has a resort and they've made an appointment and they've allowed, he's allowed them 12 minutes. Hmm. And when they go in with their video to show him, uh, it turns out he has also another woman there, a third woman character, who we later find out is a commander of a, of, of a, a special forces unit. And the 12 minutes are up, but he doesn't care. As he's suddenly become with the video so very interested in it. And later we realize he's put in his money to get this done for the expedition. Why? Why would he do that? They've persuaded him that some of these discoveries would be ultimate cures, possibly mm. pharmaceuticals. And that would be even more money for him. And the rest of it is putting this audacious plan together, a secret uh, former US Army camp on the coast, Pacific coast, um, where they proceed to put the plan together. And they're interrupted by Apparently, someone nefarious has caught wind of it somehow, mm -hmm. and they're attacking them to get the secrets. So it is a good thing they find out this woman that was there, she has brought her special forces with her, and they repel that attack, and they realize they're in for it as they go. They get an old ship, a good destroyer, that will carry the, the, the submersible, uh, out to the Pacific, to the site. They know where the site is. And the rest of it is that adventure, which continues repelling these nefarious forces, as well as the discovery, the amazing discovery itself. And then there are some surprises that I put in when they go down. 
Yeah, absolutely. It's a great story. It's a great premise. And it's very real because a lot of the things you're speculating about, scientists are speculating about also, particularly the compounds that might be helpful in making pharmaceuticals and so forth that might be at the bottom of RC. Great stuff. Have you envisioned this perhaps as a series or a film or something like that? Well, it's interesting you mentioned that. And by the way, just to pick up on your last sentence before I answer it. Sure. Uh, some of these actual discoveries that we, in a sense, predicted, and I say we, I want to emphasize my collaborator, Stephen Evans, really the genetic scientist here, mm -hmm. are now being discovered by robotic bathyspheres down at these vents. And it's coming, they're coming out almost precisely the way we envisioned it. Amazing. Um, interesting you say that, and I should, your question takes me to the fact that on YouTube, there's a 63 second outstanding video trailer of the book. Okay. And I refer people, just put in the, the go to YouTube, just put in the title, Deep Tide, Deep, dot, 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 vents of fire. And be sure to get the 63 second one, not the horrible 30 second one, because the 63 second one is really good. It caught the attention of a Hollywood screenwriter. And this is answer to your question. Mm -hmm. And she just sent us uh, Acts 1 and 2 already. Wow. And she's terrific. She asked a question one time, do I have to be exactly like, I'm an old professor of theater and film. I know mm -hmm. that these venue, the, these uh, when they become uh, different, when a book becomes a movie, you have to regard the movie or or a play. You have to regard it as that. Mm -hmm. The screenwriter has a hundred pages, one hundred and ten pages, right? You know, or a playwright has about the same. The novel can go on as long as the writer wants. Yep, and. The Act One and Act Two that I've already seen are they're terrific. They're hers, they're no longer mm -hmm. mine, which is right. And they're terrific. And I'm waiting for Act Three, but it'll be a while. Nothing good comes fast. Exactly. Wonderful. Well, that's great news. I'm happy to hear it. I think it would be a terrific film as well. Tell us about your career as a writer. You've written uh several books or many books, actually. You've got the yes. website authorforallseasons.com. Tell yes, us about thank what you. we'll find. Yes, thank you. And sure. the way to go into that, not only um, author, many short stories, essays, reviews. Uh, I'm an associate professor of speech, theater, and film. And I've also directed 40 main stage plays. Wow. Uh, actually, the only one that the Kennedy Center gave an award for ensemble, as a matter of fact. Amazing. Um, so I've had... Uh, plays produced, uh, awards for those. And yes, the, the book articles, academic articles in books and the books themselves. One is going to be republished soon. Uh, they're both nonfiction academic. One is biblical scholarship. Another is theater scholarship. Uh, other novels besides this one. And... Uh, many short stories. The most recent uh, honor, to call it that, for the fourth year in a row, I've been appointed judge for the Baltimore Playwrights Festival. Uh, it turns out we have a lot of talented playwrights here mm. who don't seem to make it to New York, off-Broadway or so on. Although I have produced an off-Broadway play, helped produce, and that's an interesting story in itself if we have time. Sure, if you'd like to tell it, we have okay, a because minute left. Okay, because it turns out one of my co-producers was Meryl Streep. Wow. <laughs> so <laughs> um, it was a, a very talented actress, Elaine Bromka. I'm going to give her a, a shout out. Mm -hmm. um, and I used to bring her in to, to help with my acting classes. And she, her play was being produced and she was short on money. So a bunch of us helped produce it. And she was $10,000 short still. Mm. And she got, uh, she had been in the business a while and had worked with this person and that person. And she got a call 
from this woman said, I hear you're $10,000 short. She said, yes, you'll have it tomorrow. And the check, the check came the next day, and that was Merrill. Mm. So the others of us in the lobby who had helped produce it, we were not going in to see the play yet. We were hoping that Merrill would drive up in her limousine, yeah. but she was already overseas. Anyway, that's so a bit of a tangent. Well, that's a wonderful story. I'm glad you've had such a diverse career, all of it rewarding, no doubt. And this book is just terrific. It is written by Donald Ray Schwartz. It is called Deep Tide, Vents of Fire. It is a gripping tale of mystery, intrigue, and adventure set in the unexplored depths of the ocean. It is a and near future scenario where two fem female scientists embark on a daring mission to uncover remarkable life forms in deep sea vents. It's a terrific world. It is basically science fiction meets science collaborated together in this unique world that Donald has created. A that is so years. well done. I thank you for that. And I want to, in that sense again, give uh, kudos to my collaborator, Stephen Evans, who made sure the genetics and the other science that we were right on target as it absolutely. turned out we were absolutely absolutely so a uh, hat tip to stephen evans as well and to you sir donald thank you so much for joining us here today on spotlight thank you logan very very much and all good things all the best to you as well my friend and to the folks at home i'm logan crawford thanking you for your time this time until next time on spotlight